I just want to opine about Trey Murphy the third for a second. Um, this is a guy who I and we we talked about Trey a couple weeks ago, if I remember correctly. And this is just somebody that I wish that I had been higher on in the draft in the way that I thought about him. Um, like one where, from where somebody, did you have him pre-draft? I had him in the first round still, but I had him like out of pretty clearly outside the lottery. I think I had him in like the mid twenties. I think I had uh, him at like 15 and yeah. I think I was low. Yeah. And like, I just, he's the kind of guy who just makes me remember that things are not nearly as black and white as you think. Like, I think so often people ask me, not that I'm like an expert, but I think people like ask me about like draft philosophy and stuff like that. I'm like, I don't know, man. I feel like I'm still learning every day, but Trey is one of the reasons why <laughs> I feel like I'm learning every day because like I looked at Trey and I'm like, this guy is just so funky and weird. And like, I know that he's still like, he just grew into his body and he's still like trying to figure that out. And, but like now this year, like he's way more flexible. Um, the shooting, like I knew the shooting. Interesting. Was really good. In what way would you say he's more flexible? Cause I've always thought that like he moves his hips and defends really well. Um, like in terms of like being able to stay in front of his guy and slide. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, what would you say has gotten more flexible about him? I think his body is just less stiff than it was for me last year. And even pre-draft, like mm. I felt like he was somebody who like, I even like as a movement shooter, I was a little bit like hesitant because I just, I felt like he was such a stiff athlete and I didn't account enough for the fact that he just was growing. Like, I think that's the kind of thing that I underrated uh, completely. And I look at him now, like he's still somebody I would consider a relatively stiff athlete, but he's like, he's, getting to the point where he's just such a like he he's a top 10 shooter in the nba like without question i think i would say that um like he is routinely spotting up from 29 30 feet and just bending defenses like he's uh one of my favorite things this year has been watching teams just get obliterated sending nail help to brandon ingram or cj mccollum because trey murphy the third is in the opposite slot that is being helped off of standing at 30 feet and like he doesn't need to step into the shot. He just takes it. And um, he's gotten uh, it's, it was more so in the early season, but like he was getting real secondary pick and roll reps, like because he's coming off of movement, um, doing real things like that. Like the defense, I think he still needs to like, he's still raw on the defensive end, but there's like actual weak side rim protection. Like he, he can slide his feet. Um, like, I think that there's real, like, I don't, I don't want to like go crazy and say that he's going to be an all-star someday, but I think there's real like potential um, potential ability for him to become somebody that you look back on in this draft is like, where did this come from? Like this guy really just kind of popped and uh, like he has a good feel for the game. I think he can make some really quality reads um, already. Like again, like a lot's going to be figuring out how to be a pick and roll playmaker and ball handler because he's going to get those, those reps as a shooter um like he started doing some stuff snaking this year like things that yeah. i just felt like i i never frankly thought i was going to see from him in the nba like he he tried he's the, during the stretch where he was he was starting he was getting up like a floater a game and i think he has the touch to really make that work like again like it's it's a funky archetype and he's a weird player and i, I mean that in the most endearing way possible but like this is a guy who i think could take like 11 or 12 three pointers per 75 possessions and uh, just become somebody who is an awesome continuity offense player. Um, and I, again, like, I think to me, it's like, it, I feel like next year he's going to, he's going to take like another step forward and everyone's going to be like, Oh, he's breaking out. And I honestly, I think he's shown the stuff this year where if he was starting for a team, like he's doing really, really interesting things. Um, not that he hasn't been for new Orleans, but again, like I think it would be getting a lot more talk. Uh, in general, like he could very well finish 50 49 this year. It's a 48 43 uh, 95 right now. Um, I think he ends up getting a 50 40 90 season in his career, but um, yeah. So I, I had to just like uncork that because I've been thinking about Trey Murphy third ton lately. No, I, I think it's really interesting, and I think you're right. This is a guy that I've always loved. I, I got so much hate last year from Pelicans fans that when I ranked Trey Murphy ahead of Herb Jones on a redraft that I did at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And they were like, wait, how can you have Trey Murphy ahead of Herb Jones? And I'm just like, just wait. Like <laughs> he's this good of a shooter. Now he's going to get better. Like, and he's a good defender. Now he's going to get better. Everything about him says that he's on this long-term trajectory at this point that should give you a lot of enthusiasm. He's a late bloomer physically. 
he is six foot nine and he is a top 10 shooter in the NBA. Like I, I've, you know, one of the guys we're going to talk about is an honorable mention is Kevin Herter and Kevin Durant just talked about how he thinks Kevin Herter is doing like a clay Thompson leap right now. And I, Kevin Herter would have been the fourth guy on my list, to be honest, um, among guys that like we really wanted to talk about. I had him and, on the short list too, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Trey Murphy is closer to Clay. I think yeah. it's more, he's going to be able to really do some crazy shit off of movement. The high release point is just such a weapon for him. And it's, it's so such an enormous too. weapon. Like and his, it's so his quick. Footwork. His footwork is awesome. It's really Footwork good. is awesome. Like, to me, that's the guy that's like the closest to Clay. Not to say that he's going to end up having like a Hall of Fame career like Clay Thompson undeniably is, but th- that's the closest guy to me. Like, y- you look at what Trey is already doing uh, in the NBA, just in terms of being as enormous as he is, be- as he is being the shooter that he is. Uh, yeah, I-, I love everything about Trey Murphy. Th- this is like. This is Mikhail Bridges all over again to me in terms of like guy that you can see from the jump is just going to be an utterly elite NBA player uh, in his role and would fit on any team in any circumstance and is going to make way more money than people think coming into the league because it's just that every single team needs this guy. Every single team needs this big floor spacer who can defend two through four and can do all sorts of different stuff while still growing into his body and actually like has guard skills because he grew up as a six foot three guard. He has real guard skills. Like he can handle the ball. He can put the ball on the ground. He's still learning how high his handle is. I think at times Mm -hmm. like just dribbling higher and sometimes he gets ripped because of it. But Yeah, man. And the other thing that's worth noting here too, is like going from Rice to Virginia was absolutely the right thing for him. And I don't like, I think it really, really helped him defensively in terms of like principles and learning how to use his body defensively and everything like that. It also, as we know, is limiting offensively in terms of scheme. Uh, They run you off of these curls off of pin downs constantly. He doesn't really get a chance to handle the ball really ever he's getting more of a chance to have that freedom offensively. And I think we're going to see more and more of that as his career goes on. This isn't a shot at Virginia. I think Virginia does an absolutely phenomenal job developing NBA players, as you can see by their long track record of developing NBA players. I'm just saying that I think that because their scheme is what their scheme is offensively, he didn't get a chance to show off as much of the skill as what he has offensively, which is what they should have done. Like it's what, you know, they should have done at the time, but we're going to see more and more from him in terms of being an on-ball player uh, throughout the rest of his career. 